All right, so in this case, now, so the last one, you guys had a constraint, and then you had um, a trigonometric value that you could evaluate to create your triangle, right? Because remember, if you don't have a point that's on the unit circle, you have to create a triangle. Last problem, we created a triangle, right? Yeah. We used that with the constraint and the value of sine to create a triangle. In this one, negative 4, 8 is not on the unit circle, right? Because the unit circle has a radius of 1. So again, we have to create a triangle. So automatically, if, you got, if they're asking you to, what are they asking? They're find uh, what value? Just a theta, was it? Find the terminal side of the angle of output. Let me just see the problem real quick. Um, so find the point, find the terminal side of the angle theta in standard position. Find sine of theta. Find sine of theta. So we need to find our sine of alpha. All right, so we need to create a triangle. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're taking a test and you see a problem like this, you have a coordinate point. If anything, draft the coordinate point. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? Everybody should know how to plot a coordinate. So you plot the coordinate. But we still need to create a triangle. So remember, how we create our triangle is you create a perpendicular line to the x-axis. That creates your right angle. Because remember, to do our trig that we've done so far, to do Pythagorean theorem, to do sine, cosine, and tangent, you have to have a right triangle. So you're always going to take your point and create a perpendicular line to the x-axis. That creates your right triangle, or your right angle. Now, to create the angle, we always take our point and go directly to our origin. That creates our angle, which in this case is alpha. And when you have an angle that's at your origin, we call that a central angle. All right. So now we have our coordinate point. So that means that length is negative 4, and that length is 8. So we need to figure out, if we're trying to find sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We don't know what h is. So I do 8 squared plus negative 4 squared equals h squared. Right? Apply the Pythagorean theorem. It's a right triangle, so we can do that. 64 plus 16 equals h squared. So that becomes 80 equals h squared. Take the square root. Take the square root. Now remember, the hypotenuse is always positive. So we're not going to include the negative, a part of this. And now I just need to see you know, what can I simplify um, with this. And so we need to see simplifying this. Um, huh? Yeah, too bad it's not 81. You're right. Um, actually, yeah, let's go and simplify it. So we know that um, 40 goes in there two times, right? So if I go and simplify this. I could do 40 times 2. Break down 40, we could think of the square number that goes into 40, which could be 4 and 10, right? So that could break down to um, 2 times 20. Well, I can break that down again. 2 times uh, 4 times square root of 5. So yeah, 16. Could have done 16 times 5, which would have been the same thing. So anyways, we have 4 times square root of 5 equals h squared. Well, they're saying sine of alpha. Sine of alpha is equal to opposite, which is h, over your hypotenuse, 4 square root of 15. However, you know that the final answer on your exam is not going to have a uh, radical on the bottom. So you rationalize the denominator. So therefore, you have sine of alpha equals 8 times the square root of 15. And the square root of 15 times the square root of 15 is 15. 4 times 15 is going to be? You're right. Sorry about that. I don't know where 15 came from. So that'd be 8 times the square root and 5. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. 5 times 4 is 20. Then you guys see that we can simplify this again by dividing by 4. So 4, that's going to become 2. 5. So sine of alpha equals 2 square root of 5 over 5. And that's your final solution. Okay. Um, I have